If you were to grab a shovel and run outside and dig a hole, I doubt that you would assess the depth of the hole by looking at how rough it is in the bottom of the hole. The roughness in the bottom of the hole really doesn't tell us much about how much digging you've done. But ironically, when people start talking about surface texture, I often see people looking at the roughness of a surface before some kind of testing, and then maybe they'll look at the roughness of the surface after the test and decide that the value RA changed some amount and therefore there must be that much wear. Well, that's wrong. The roughness does not tell us the amount of wear or the depth of wear or the volume of material that's been removed. These two surfaces on the right may have indeed been before and after, but that's not the relationship. If we zoom in a little bit and look at our before surface, and we look at perhaps the after surface, the after surface will often have shallow valleys where the original one might have had deep valleys. The proper way of looking at wear would be to take this surface back over here and plot it so that those valleys that we originally had latched on to the remaining valleys. This is the depth of wear. Now we don't have easy parameters for this. We might have been looking at the tradi traditional RA value here and maybe an RA value over here, but again that tells us nothing about this sense of depth. One of the problems is that the RA value uses a mean line or the zero line. And in the original surface, the zero right here, or the Z axis zero to be more specific, is here. And on the worn surface, we put the mean line right here because that's the way the measurement system works. We kind of take the average for zero. These two zeros don't relate because this new surface actually sits lower. So this change in the mean line is fooling us. So a simple roughness measurement may not tell us much about where, simply looking at RA before and RA after. But we can do this kind of thing. We can actually plot profiles on top of each other and look at things like depths. Now this addresses the topic of what we would consider micro wear. This is wear that's microscopic, it's within the surface texture. But how about the case of more macro wear? What if our surface looks like this and we actually did dig a hole with our metaphorical shovel and there's part of the surface that's worn away? In this kind of world of macro wear, we would take a totally different approach. We would predict where is the shape of the original surface on either side of the scar and then project some geometry across the scar to simulate what the original surface was. And now we can do things like geometric volumes and depths of this worn area. So again, we're not using roughness, but rather using geometry. So whether it's micro wear within the texture or macro wear of a large scar, we have tools for handling these, but please don't jump right to the conclusion that my roughness changed and the change in roughness has some sense of depth associated with it. It's like measuring the rocks at the bottom of the hole to try to decide how deep the hole is. To better understand your wear problems, to measure and understand what's going on with your materials, reach out to us at digitalmetrology.com. We're happy to help.